need to find the derivative of this function. And one thing you'll notice is that I have x up here as an exponent. And when I see an x as an exponent, it's, uh, it frequently means somehow I'm going to need to bring it down. Now, not always, but, but, but it's not infrequent. So the way that I'm going to get x down from being an exponent is I'm going to take a logarithm of both sides. So I'm going to go ln y, I'm not doing the derivative yet, is equal to ln sine x to the x power. And now I can use the power rule of logarithms to make this a factor. So I have logarithm of y is equal to x ln sine x. That's my function now. I've, I've taken a logarithm of both sides. Well, I have to find the derivative with respect to x, so I'm going to do derivative with respect to x of that side, and I'm going to do derivative with respect to x of that side. So on my left-hand side, well, the derivative of a, of a natural logarithm would be 1 over y, over the argument. But since y is a function, I need to use the chain rule. And that's going to be dy dx, the derivative of y. And that's going to equal, well, here I have a product. So I'm going to have to use uv plus uv and see if I can do the derivative of that. Well, the derivative of u, which is my x right here, is 1. So that's times the logarithm of sine x plus, well, u is x. And I have to do times the derivative of the natural logarithm of sine x, which is 1 over sine x. But remember, this sine x right here, this is the argument of the logarithm. So that is an inside function. I did the outside function when I did 1 over sine x. But I have to multiply that times the derivative of the sine x, the inside function, to complete the chain rule. So that is cosine x. So now let's uh, simplify a little bit. I still have uh, 1 over y times dy dx, and that is equal to, well, 1 times the logarithm, natural logarithm of sine x is just ln sine x plus, let's make that a plus so it looks like a plus, plus x, and I have here 1 over sine x times cosine x, well, that's the same thing as cosine x over sine x, so that is 1, that is x cotangent x. So that's a little bit simpler. Now I can, uh, I can divide both sides by, well, I can, I can multiply both sides of this equation by y, since I have 1 over y. I can multiply this times y, and I can multiply this whole thing times y. And so I'm left with derivative of y with respect to x is equal to y, natural logarithm, sine x, plus, make it a plus, Glenn, plus x cotangent x. And just to make things really nice and tidy, I go back up here and I see, oh, well, y is equal to sine x to the x. So there's no real reason to have a y on, on this side of the equation. I'm just going to call it sine x to the x. So this is sine x to the x times log sine x plus x cotangent x. And that is my derivative of this function. So that is using logarithmic differentiation, which means 
introducing a logarithm. So I introduced the logarithm. I put this logarithm in here in order to make this an easier problem to solve. If I hadn't been able to do that, if I hadn't done that, I don't know that I would have been able to get that x right here out of uh, being an exponent. 